All right, we did it. We finally got live, everybody. Um, we were dealing with some um, overload in Zoom right now, so there must be everybody in the world using Zoom, using Facebook Live, but we are live, we are here, and um, I'm super excited to bring you our second Sunday edition a week early. Why? Because time doesn't really matter at this point. We're all inmates, right? We're all stuck in the house. We're all on this journey together, and I have a really special live for you guys today. Um, you know, normally on Second Sunday, I give you guys like an energetic broadcast of what's going on in the cosmos, in the world, in the collective, in our lives. And obviously, we all know what's going on in our lives because we're all sitting at home. And it's really exciting times. So for those of you who haven't heard of me, my name is Jessica Alstrom, and I am the founder of the Jessica Alstrom Method. I have a global war world tour that I do all over the world called the Quantum Revolution Tour with my amazing team. And what we do is we travel all around the world and in three days we raise the vibration and we shift the collective by basically teaching you guys how to access deeper levels of your own potential, um, opening up and accessing new layers of your DNA using epigenetic processes to elevate consciousness, self-realization, and really put you in, on the journey that you want to be on. You know, we're all kind of like on that bridge kind of thing where we're like, I'm here, I want to be here, and that's what we do. So we are all about raising consciousness and elevating self-realization by giving you practical tools that are based in quantum potential. So I am what they call an alchemist, and my job as an alchemist is to help you by me being an example of, shut, you know, basically turning your darkness into light. And what that looks like is fear, shame, guilt, resentment, humiliation, grief. Those are all things that we call dark emotions, right? Those are the shadow emotions that we're here processing out. And I'm sure you've felt all of those over the last couple of months, if not for your whole life. And they're probably pretty irrelevant right now. And um, you're pretty aware of them right now because you have kind of pulled yourself within on this journey. So I want to explain to you guys from a quantum perspective what the coronavirus's purpose is. And today I'm going to teach all of you guys a very simple, practical quantum healing tool that I teach in my academy all over the world. My seven-year-old son knows how to do this. So if he can do it, you guys can do it. You'll know all know how to do this when it's over. And why I'm going to teach you that is let's get the show on the road. You know, we kind of understand at a higher level of consciousness why this is happening, right? We understand that we have, as a collective, we are this biological quantum computer. We are consciousness that is housed in this multidimensional suit. And this multidimensional suit has obtained viruses, right? Especially up here. And if we look at the word corona, we realize it means crown, right? Crown, mind, virus of the mind, virus of our lives, virus of our heart, virus of our guts, right? And so as a collective, because we are creating our own reality, we have created a global virus, right? Metaphors, guys, metaphors. Everything's about metaphors. So what a perfect, perfect disruption of the rat race. What a perfect trigger for you living in the future. What a perfect loss for you to be able to have to lose things in your physical reality to get back to yourself. You know, we can't go out, but we can go in. We're having to learn personal boundaries in our own homes with our kids and our spouses and our pets. We're having to speak our truth. We're having to learn about simplicity and living in the moment versus rushing to the future. We are learning how to be with ourselves. We are remembering what we enjoy at a baseline point. We are recalibrating our energy fields because we're staying away and getting away from the entanglement of society. We're not chasing anything right now, and we can't. So we're being asked to kind of bring it in, bring it all in. And I will tell you the vibration around the planet, because I have an opportunity to work with people all over the world every single day, is it's peaceful. The hospitals are almost empty, most places that I've heard of right now. Now, if you're in a, in a situation or in a place where it's not, 
you know, that's that's one place out of probably 30 countries that I've had an opportunity to chat with this week. And the status quo is everything is kind of normalizing in a kind of chill way, which is awesome. All right. So the whole point of all of this is this grand awakening. And we needed something big to disrupt the patterns that we were all following. We were pattering this this pattern we were following was all about go, 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 rush to the future and not really appreciating the past, being frustrated, having no patience having no self-trust, right? No inner guidance on. So we're looking for this person and this person and this person to tell us who we are and what to do and what to eat and how to feel. And through running to the future, we are always escaping the past. So as we're doing that, we're not realizing that we're terrified of the present moment. And in the present moment, we have to be with ourselves. So the universe did a solid for us and sent us all to our rooms. And I remember being a kid and getting sent to my room for being bad, of course. And, you know, what it would look like is I would go to my room and first I would go through the basically the, the, the seven stages of grief. I would get super, 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 super upset. Then I would get mad, right? I bang on the walls. I say, I'm running away from home. This is ridiculous. You can't keep me in here. Sound familiar in the last couple of weeks? And then you kind of like settle in and you're like, okay, this is this is where I'm going to be for a while. And all of a sudden, you know, something from across your room catches your eye and it's, you know, your old yearbook. And you sit on the floor and you kind of settle in and you're not completely surrendered yet, but you're kind of like giving up a little bit because you know you got some time. You start looking in your yearbook and you start remembering. You start remembering who you were. And you have some positive and some negative memories and you maybe put on some music and you have a few tears and you process a little grief and you remember people you've lost and you sit with yourself and you're like, where is this girl? Right. And all of a sudden something else catches your eye in your room and it's like your favorite thing that you have been looking for forever. And you're looking at it and you're playing with it. And all of a sudden you're starting to like have this relationship with yourself that you haven't had in a really long time because your room's been so cluttered that you literally walked into sleep and walked out to live your life. You didn't realize that, that this room was you. And so after a couple of hours of you returning to yourself, mom knocks on the door and says, okay, you can come out. And you're like, I'm good here. I'm good with me. I'm good with you. I'm good with the family. I'm good with life. I remember who I am. Welcome to the coronavirus 2020. In January, I told you all that we were all going on a vision quest, didn't I? We thought maybe it would be something really cool and awesome, but no, it's us being at home alone. And, you know, watching tons of movies and documentaries and learning new things and homeschooling our kids and cleaning up our messes and taking walks in nature and reminding ourselves of who our friends and family are. And I will tell you, it is the greatest move we have ever made as a species to manifest this. Now, some of you guys are having opposing experiences. I understand. I completely understand if you are losing your jobs, losing your families, losing your things. And and there's, you know, 8 billion people in the world. So I'm I'm speaking to the mass consciousness. So individually, your journeys will look different, okay? But if you act in a state of surrender to yourself, right? And surrender to the moment and realize that everything negative is a shortcut for you. And look at the potentials and the limits and the possibilities in the lack you will discover yourself. You will discover that loss is part of the great awakening. You will understand that disruption is required for awareness and raising consciousness. You'll understand that the triggers that we are manifesting within ourselves, with each other, with our jobs, with money, with time, with toilet paper, that it is returning us to a root wound that we have been avoiding for a really long time. You know, like, what does it feel like to have no toilet paper? What does it feel like to only have three months of savings in your account or no money in your account and not know what's going to happen? What is that bringing up in you? Because this virus, this global virus that has joined us all together in unified commiseration, which is how we bond on this planet, has brought us all together to suffer gently in our own awakening together for the first time in history. 
We are not being asked to go to war like our grandparents are, you know, did. We are being asked to sit on the couch and calm our minds and calm our spirits and calm ourselves and calm our households and recalibrate the structure of our family dynamic and learn to spend time alone, spend time with, with each other. Remember the simple things that bring us joy, like board games or conversations or making dinner together, which is something that we have lost because we were in this age of materialism where we were chasing success and we were chasing abundance, where we were literally overlooking what is always abundantly here. You know, just think about it for a moment, probably how much more abundant in time you are right now. And if you're more abundant in time, it doesn't mean that your time's not filled with things that you need to be doing, but if you're more abundant in time, realize that time and space is actually how you get to manifest your reality here on earth. You use time and space to create, to decide, to discern, to choose, to observe, to practice and become. That's how you create your reality. But when we're running, 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 complaining, 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 we're in lack, we're in loss, we're not processing any of it, we're chasing the next moment, we're chasing the next movie, we're chasing the next person, we're chasing the next opportunity. We are never allowing ourselves to go into where the virus is. And if you've ever had a virus on your computer, it's really annoying, right? So you're trying to work, and you get a pop-up that takes you over here and it distracts you over here. And now you can't get back to your original settings. You can't get back to what you were working on before. And that's basically what has happened in our minds. And, and it, it started when we were young. It started when we weren't allowed to be ourselves. It started when we learned the word no. You know, we, it started when we um, were humiliated for being ourselves. It started when, you know, we were shamed and guilted. For, for being ourselves or, or exploring or you know, breaking rules, which we're all really good at. And we were resentful. We became resentful of the people who didn't understand us and see us and hear us. And so we became lost in the virus of these lower emotional fields. And these lower emotional fields have basically buried us and rooted us into a place of such density that the only way that we can experience not feeling dense is to chase the next moment, hoping that it will feel different than being stuck, being trapped, you know, feeling unfree, feeling unloved. You know, I've been talking for a really long time to my community and people all over the world and letting them know that we are in the fourth phase of grand awakening. We are deep into the ascension, you guys. Fourth phase which means fourth chakra. We've been working our way up, if you've been watching my second Sundays over the last five years. We've been working our way up to this point. Now, the, the heart is the only chakra that remains in non-duality. It does not care if you're black or white. It does not care if you're fat or skinny, if you're broke or rich. It just wants to share love, just like a child. It also wants to receive love, and it doesn't care where it's from. It just wants to be. And the thing we forget as humans here is that we are human beings, not human doings. We are here to be ourselves. We are here to demonstrate that beingness through love. Someone asked me in our session the other day, and I thought it was a really great question. She said, I don't even know what love is. I don't know what it is. I've never really experienced it. And so I asked her, okay, well, when's the last time you went live on Facebook? And she said, yesterday. And I said, what was the purpose of that live? And she said, well, I wanted to share with my friends information that I had. I wanted to give something to them. I wanted to share something with them. And I said, great. And she said, I wanted to know, I want them to know they're loved. And I said, well, you just said the word that you told me you didn't know the meaning of. So is the meaning of love to share? to share knowledge, to share space, to share time, to show, share energy, to receive energy, to receive time, to receive knowledge. And she was like, yeah, that makes sense. And that is the truest definition of love that we have in the, the human language is acceptance. I accept you completely for who you are without you needing to change. 
I want to share with you who I am completely without me needing to change. And as we're in this fourth awakening, we keep hitting up against the obstacle that we are not allowing ourselves to do that because we're worried about being judged or someone seeing our Facebook post or, you know, us not having the time or we need the paycheck so we can't really share the way we want to share. You know, we think that we come down here and we have to have some huge purpose. And this huge purpose needs to create our value so that we can feel worthy and deserving of love and money. And that is the biggest scam that anyone has ever in, in, indoctrinated you with because all you ever needed to do was return to the child, the non-duality perspective of yourself who just wants to share. Now you also want to receive, but the collective is very blocked in receiving. And why is that? Because the virus of receiving, the virus of receiving is I don't want to look weak. I don't want this to be conditional. I don't want your agenda attached to your offering. I don't want your advice that you're gonna give me once you help me. I don't want to feel small. I don't want to feel insignificant. I don't wanna lose myself by you helping me. So we've become a collective that is afraid to share their heart because it's gonna get broken or judged or humiliated. And we've become a collective of people who are in dire fear of receiving because of what that could mean conditionally. And this is why we manifested this particular metaphor globally in 2020 at the beginning of our vision quest when the heart chakra is ready to open because we have to take a look and we have to be present enough and isolated enough in our own fields without the entanglement of the story of the world, without us constantly looking at spectacular, extraordinary people on a screen and not feeling the same way about ourselves, throwing all of our money to celebrityism and to major league sports to watch someone else be extraordinary while we sit on the couch and hope that one day we could feel that for five minutes. When all along, the things that inspire you, the things that inspire your heart are actually part of you. And as you settle into the stillness that we're all been given right now, you're starting to feel that toolbox. I know you are. That toolbox is opening, that heart is opening, that inner child is returning, you're laughing for no reason, you're playing with sticks and, and stones again, you're making things up, imagination, you're activating your imagination, your divine workshop of creation, and you're remembering who you were before the world told you that you had to be something in order to get something. And that is why we all together, collectively, in a unified space of one, in the heart, attracted this virus in this moment at this time. And yes, every negative is a shortcut because we are stubborn, aren't we? We are stubborn and we need something big and we need to be, we need to um, have discipline in order for us to get back online. And we need to soften, we need to surrender, we need to accept. We need to learn what patience is and patience by no means means waiting because you are a creator. You did not come here to wait. You are actually unfamiliar with time and space from a spiritual space, which means that time and space, if it's not being used properly, will drive you insane because you are here to use time and space to create, to decide, to discern, to practice, prepare, and play. That's what you came to use time and space for. Not to run, 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 run all day and have no time for yourself. You did not come here for that use of time. And that's why you are, most of you, most of us, were in an abusive relationship with time for a very long time. You know, I noticed when my son was five years old, which is in the seven year cycle, year five represents self-love, okay? And in year five, he started having a real problem with time. What time is it? When do I have to go to school? How much more time do I have to play? How much more time do I have at your house before I have to go to my daddy's house? 
And I noticed that it was starting to corrupt his joy because he was anticipating how much time he had left or how much time something was going to take because it was squishing the joy out of him. In the same year that he was apparently supposed to be downloading the frequency and mastery of self-love. Now we look at our relationship to our own self-love and we look at a match of it as time. And if we're not using time to practice, prepare, and play, and imagine, and perform, and be, then of course we're not going to love ourselves because we're not using consciousness the way that we should be to develop our ability to self-realize ourselves more in the next moment. Because every time you practice, prepare, and play for the next moment, you are learning more about yourself. And you can't get it wrong because it's all make-believe, right? It's all a big dream. This is all a holographic universe that we're living in. And it's not about failure. It's about practice. It's about experiences. It's about self-knowledge. It's about understanding that sometimes you have to experience things that you don't want in order to get the things that you do want, okay? So I'm hoping that you're kind of putting the whole metaphor together because if you've been studying with me, I teach in metaphors. I teach that nothing is, is it as it appears. You're never upset for the reasons you think. You're never looking at something from a story's perspective and getting a real truth. Anything that you're upset with in the present moment is coming from the past because all present moment is neutral. There is no significance in the present moment except the energy and the effort and the understanding that you give it. So if you're upset in the present moment, you're actually scared or upset from a past that you're afraid is going to return. So if you really look at what has come up for you with this virus, okay? This virus is not just the physical, um, you know, physical health uh, understanding. It's the virus of so many different aspects, jobs, functions, things being closed, you know, you're being kind of limited, right? So it's not just a scary virus that is, you're worried about your health right now. You're also worried about your life, maybe, okay? So you want to go dive down e deep into your metaphor. What is your metaphor of the coronavirus? Like, what is this pulling out within you? Because as I told you guys, we would be embarking in this vision quest. We're going collectively on a vision quest, but we're also going individually. And each person is going through their own test to see who they have become from what they are and what level of awareness that they're in. So you're kind of looking at like your test scores right now of what you've been able to create and what you haven't been able to create. And so my question to you is, what does the coronavirus bring up in you? Not what does it mean to you? What does it bring up in you? What type of fear? Now, ask yourself this, what am I really afraid of? What am I really afraid of when I think about this virus? What am I really doubting? What am I really terrified of? What am I um, upset about? And then what you do is you follow the thread right, of the grief or the anger or the frustration or the curiosity, right? You follow the thread and you go back and find an earlier similar event or maybe an idea of event that was terrifying you that brings you to this present moment and is now amplifying and triggering it within you because this is a very neutral situation that we're in. You know, people. People unfortunately die every single day from all different ways, right? It's just a circle of life. And from my perspective, knowing lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of people from upstairs, I also know that death is always chosen from a soul space, not from the ego space, not from, you know, the body. The body is always going to feel a little scared when the body is sick, but the soul always chooses its death time. And it chooses exactly how it wants to go and when it wants to go and the effect that it wants to create and leave behind to awaken as many people as it can. Because again, when someone dies from something, it wakes everybody else up around them and then we can go research and create inventions and you know, start, you know, start healing from it. So grief, broken hearts, actually is the way that we mend our hearts as a collective. It's how we all come together. It's how we, we bring our compassion together. And as we bring compassion together, 
we start to, to function as a unified structure again, which we really need to do as a global collective. I mean, hands down. So my question for you before we dive into the quantum healing part of this is what is it bringing up in you? Because this is going to be your why of why you manifested this in your life. Because we all manifested it in a collective space, but we're manifesting the individual storyline and metaphor of how we are experiencing this. Okay, we are experiencing individually this virus on a completely different level than anyone in your in your in your, anyone else in your life. Even the people in your house are experiencing it different than you because your universe is processing it completely different. So your your question is what is this bringing up in you? What is it activating in you? What is it um, summonsing in within you? What is it evoking in you? Because not all of it's bad. You know, for me, I've always used fear as a shortcut to be more courageous, to be more thoughtful, to be more kind. Okay, so what is it bringing up in you that you can use as potential? And then the fear that's coming up, how can you visit that? and find the roots and the anchors inside that pain that existed long before we manifested physically the virus, we already had the energetic virus. It works like this, guys. Energy, emotions, and feelings, manifested reality, form. We cannot have something in form if we have not built it from first a blueprint, then a foundation, then building materials, then you can all see it. And that is exactly what we did is we were like asking and asking and asking and asking and asking for help. Help came in the form of a virus. Every negative is a shortcut, which brings me into teaching you guys a quantum healing technique that anyone can do. And before I teach it to you guys, I need to give you a little backstory information because when you're playing in the quantum field, you're playing in parallel realities. You're not playing on this earth plane. You're playing in all earth plane. You're playing in all the possibilities and all the particles in all of the universe and you get to choose which parallel reality that you choose. The reason why I'm teaching you guys this today for two reasons. First is you guys start doing this quantum healing for yourselves and your collective. Let's speed up the process. Let's get back into our Mexican restaurants and have a margarita together and get on the beach, right? Let's get back to our lives, except everything will always you know, look different because we'll be different after this. We will appreciate things more. We will not take things for granted as much and we will not be so gluttonous after this is over. Not to mention that the world is really going to change. And that was in my other video that I did called um, coronavirus, the world is in a timeout. So check that out because I talk about 5D, I talk about 5G, and I talk about what the new earth is going to look like in that video. So for right now, I want to give you a little backstory about quantum healing. Because we're working in parallel realities, when you shift your perspective and you shift your biochemistry, you shift into a new timeline, you shift into a new reality, you shift into a different you that is more in alignment, hopefully, with your higher self. Now you can shift into a parallel reality with one of your lower selves when you regress and dive into fear and make choices out of, you know, fear and anger and resentment and shame and guilt. You can regress in those timelines because there's billions and billions and billions, not even, it's not even billions, it's more than billions of timelines that you can choose to jump in and out of. So this is a quantum leaping tool, but it's actually a healing tool. So this isn't just to get you out of the scenario where you're living with the virus. This is to get you into the creator seat where you realize the how and the when is not your job, that your job is to command the universe through creating your reality, to take full responsibility of the problems that you've created, and to know that if I created a problem or a challenge in my reality, that I also simultaneously, because I am creator and I am duality, that I also created the solution. Me. If I create a problem, I create a solution. Hands down, always works that way. But your human brain is designed to look at the problem, look at the problem, look at the problem, study the problem, talk about the problem, amplify the problem, worry, fear the problem, write about the problem, share the problem. And if you understand quantum physics, anything you look at gets bigger. So now your problem gets bigger. 
you run away from it thinking that you outran it by getting a different house, a different job, a different person. But then what you realize is you always take yourself with you. So within three days to three weeks to three months, you're back in that old problem again. And you have no idea why, because you just basically went back to that parallel reality. That is the problem. And the problem, look in the mirror, is who's creating it over and over and over again. So with the idea of that, we want to look at, well, which parallel reality do we want to go in? I want to go into a parallel reality where we're already functioning as a unified field of consciousness, which means that we are a connected based species, not attachment based species, that we do not live our lives through codependency. We live our lives through connection and partnership and expansion, that we all play nice with each other, that we return to the heart where it doesn't matter who you are, you're all in love with everyone again, like we were when we were children. We have crazy inventions and technology because we're using this part of our brain, not this part of our brain. This is frontal cortex where all your genius is. Back here, your, your reptilian brain where your survival and your control and your, um, you know, your scarcity issues are. And when we create from that brain, we're creating a limited perspective, right? The idea of GMO foods was created back here, guys. Yes, let's mass produce foods that's poisonous right? Because we've got a lot more people to feed. That's a justification. It needs to have a really long shelf life because we've got to send it all over the world. And it'll hurt people, but they'll adapt, right? It'll give them a little bit of nutrition, but their bodies will adapt. And if they don't, we have this amazing drug that we created as well to numb and push away the symptoms so that the human body won't feel it. Because, you know, what the hell? These are solutions that come from problems. Now, what we want to do is what Einstein, Einstein says, is we want to go into the solution energy to find the solution, like attracts like. We don't want to go into the problem, okay? So before I teach you guys this, I will want to disclose something very important. And I teach this all over the world and I tell, say the same story. So if you've heard this from me in class, you know, go get a cup of water. But this is really important that you guys listen to this. Because of the way that we are designed in duality, okay, we are our greatest strength and we are also our greatest enemy, hands down. And by being our greatest enemy, at times, we are sabotaging, we are limited, we are critical, we are judgmental of ourselves, and therefore we are judgmental and critical and shallow of other people. And it takes the universe to work in your path of least resistance to bring you what you have asked for. Because when you ask, it is always given, right? It is always given. It may not be given in the way that you wanted to receive it. You may have had an expectation of how you wanted the universe to bring you something. And when it didn't bring it to you exactly the way you wanted it to, you were upset or that you sabotaged the ingredients that it gave you instead of giving you the whole cake. You got in your own way when the universe started to deliver the magic that you asked for because it didn't look the way you wanted it to look, okay? So I'm going to explain to you that if you do this quantum healing tool for your life right now, for whatever problems you're dealing with, whatever solutions you wanna create, whatever epidemic you want gone, whatever virus you want healed, you have to understand that the universe can only work in your path of least resistance, your path. It has to work in my path of least resistance, which means what belief systems that I have in the way, what behavior I have in the way, what mindset I have in the way, what programming I have in the way. The universe has to work around all of that to bring me what I've asked for. So it's going to bring it to me in a package that's going to be the least resistant but get most of my awareness into responsibility, right? The universe wants you to take responsibility for who you say you are. Now, we know in my classroom that responsibility means the ability to respond. It's not a bad word at all. But when we look at that, we realize that that's why every negative is a shortcut. Because the universe is working in the path of least resistance. So let's look at this virus. Path least resistance. Oh my gosh, the world's shut down. All the retail businesses are closing. All the non-essentials are closing. 
We're having to stay in our house. We're all on a timeout. We're not supposed to leave. Only place we can go is nature. Darn, right? You can only be around your people. Darn, right? You're only supposed to do the things you have to do. Shucks, right? And you have to go think about it. Okay. And you know what might be a really good time to start taking care of this body? Just, you know, wash your hands and, you know, start to be more aware of how you've been keeping this healthy, right? We look at it, negative, negative, universe, short, shortcut, 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 okay? So everything negative is shortcut. That takes me back to when I first started using this technique. Back in 2014, I had a wellness center here in Kansas City called Transcendence Wellness Center. And we were a pretty big deal here. We had over 25 practitioners. We had every type of practitioner. You know, we didn't hide behind massage therapy. We were, we were definitely in the freak zone. We had quantum healers. We had sound healers. We had breathwork teachers. We had kinesiologists. We had crystal beds. I mean, we were doing all kinds of things. And we were not hiding behind any of the, you know, we were, we were the woo-woo. We were, we were definitely out there. And I was doing some quantum healing, some life coaching, and I taught seminars about um, manifesting because that's that was my highest joy back then. So I had this gal come to me and she said, I want a quantum healing session. And I said, are you sure? And that is what I'm asking you right now. Are you sure you want to do this with me? Because you don't have to, because your life is going to change if you do this technique today with me. I'm standing up for a reason when I get to the point where we're going to do this. I want everybody who's actually listening to me to stand up. I know you're all home, right? So when we get there, I'm going to have you all stand up because you need to feel your quantum field. You need to feel what a healing session actually feels like. When you're laying on a bed, you're in complete surrender, right? You can't feel that three-foot field moving around you, but you will in a few minutes. So she came to me and she said, I want a quantum healing session. And I said, are you sure? And she said, yeah, why? And I said, because the universe works in shortcuts, right? The more intentive you are about something, the faster it's going to deliver it to you, but not the way that you want it. And she says, I don't care. I said, okay, what are you looking for? She said, I am estranged from my family. We haven't spoken in five years. And I'm, I, it's not my fault. I don't want to mend this. I want my family back together, but I don't want to apologize. Okay, number one. Second thing she said is I need money. I need some money so that I can start my business. You know, she was uh, working on getting her Reiki certifications and she really wanted to open up, you know, a practice, but she was working paycheck to paycheck. She had, she was a single mom. You know, there was nothing at the end of her paycheck that would allow her to invest anything into herself. That's a lot of our stories, right? There's nothing left. So I said, okay, well, we're going to do this session. And then you're going to look for the shortcuts. You're going to look for what's different. You're going to look for who you are different, okay? And you're going to act different because that's a major thing in healing you guys don't realize sometimes is that after the healing session, it's your job to be who you say you wanted to be before you came in, right? You gotta keep the story going so that your biochemistry can catch up with the energy session you just received, act as if, and move into the field of consciousness and let your biochemistry, your epigenetic, change and morph into the parallel reality that you've chosen. Otherwise, you get off that table, you go out into the world, you have the old thinking mind, you go into the old toxic relationships, your old parallel reality shifts back in, you just wasted a hundred bucks on a healer, and now you feel worse, okay? So I'm gonna give you all of these tools for free because we need to do it and let's get back to playing with each other. So, okay. So she calls me a week, two weeks later. I don't remember exact time. It was a long time ago. And she says to me, I'm in the hospital. I have just had a major car accident. I, you know, broken bones, lots of bones. I think it was like her hips and her legs and she's got like, you know, metal poles in her legs. And it was really near death experience. And she's like, what the hell? Right. Of course, it's my fault because I, I mean, we just did this session a week before. And I just said, wait for it. Everything negative is a shortcut. And that's all I said. And she said, I don't understand what you mean, but whatever. And, you know, got off the phone. 
So this is what showed up as her shortcut, just like our virus is showing up for us now. Her shortcut was a near-death experience brings family together. So surrounding her in her hospital bed every day since the accident was her family. Okay, not the way she wanted it to, but her pride of not wanting to apologize, the universe had to use a shortcut and bring her into that humble space of surrender, number one. Now, number two, she was hit by someone who had great insurance. She walked away with 250K out of a settlement from that deal and was able to open up her own place. Every negative is a shortcut. Now you guys are going, okay, don't teach me this quantum healing because I don't want a car accident, right? I have every student tell me that. But the truth is, is God love this woman, who I do, who we're still friends with, who I'm still friends with, she's very stubborn, okay? She was very prideful. Her ego was very, very, very present with her living of her life. And the more, e the more present your ego is, the more pressure higher self and universe will put on you to bring you what you asked for. It's going to pressurize you at the same time as giving you what you asked for because it wants you to be the person who is asking. You know, someone who wants to open up a center and deliver, you know, beautiful energy and healing needs to be someone who can receive love and, and needs someone who can be present and someone who can surrender. And this woman would not surrender her story. She would not surrender the pain around her family. And she would not surrender the story about money. So the universe said, I will help you surrender through the path of least resistance. And so it was. Okay. So before you guys do this, take a look at who your ego is. Take a look at the pride you carry. You know, are you afraid to look stupid? I'm certainly not. Are you afraid to be judged by what we're saying on Facebook? I'm certainly not, okay? Are you worried about what other people think of you, okay? Because these are all things you're gonna need to take into consideration when you're doing quantum healing because quantum healing is literally picking you up and putting you in a new parallel reality that you asked for. Now, when you go into a new reality, you have to be the person that you say you're going to be. So you're gonna to have to do a crash course in self-realization in order to live the new life. So whatever needs to be purified, looked at, felt, surrendered, big word, will happen through the path of least resistance, like what we're going through, and you will be given exactly what you asked for in non the way that you asked for it, okay? So this is quantum healing. And the one that I'm gonna teach you guys today is what I call in my academy, quantum zero point energy, okay? Now, we right now as a collective are in what's called zero point energy. We are in the void, right? We are in a collective space where we cannot create the future yet. We are in what's called uncertainty. And uncertainty, when you look at quantum physics, is probabilities, it's potentials. All things are potentials when we're in this space. Collectively, for the first time in a very, very long time, we're all in the void, which means that we're in the zero point field. And if you've ever seen the movie The Matrix, it's like that big white room where they go in and decide what's next, what the code, where, where the coding happens, where the programs are created, where everything is at a root place before it becomes. This is where we are collectively right now. We're in the zero point field. So your heart is what we would call the zero point field of you because it remains in a state of non-duality. It All it is capable of is sharing and receiving love. That's it. It's its only purpose. Now, because the heart shares and receives, it's telepathic and it communicates with all other frequencies that are open to it, okay? But we've built lots of walls around our heart. Therefore, we attract a lot of people who are emotionally unavailable to reflect back to us that we are emotionally unavailable. Even though we might be perpetrating love at someone or being a victim of love at someone, we too have these walls. But when you're doing the zero point work, you are actually removing the walls from yourself because you're taking responsibility, the ability to respond for your own problem by creating your own solution. And this is how it works. If you wanna play along right now, I want everybody to stand up that is watching this live. Now you can do this later. 
Um, you can teach your kids how to do this, super easy. And the benefits of this, like I just explained, are instant, okay? Which means that as soon as you ask, it's given. Now you may have to line up time and space. The universe might have to move mountains for you to get you what you want. But because we're all in the energy field of zero right now, it's probably gonna manifest a lot faster than if you were running a rat race and you weren't present to realize the signs, signals, and opportunities that were in your lap that you weren't appreciating or participating with because you were sabotaging, okay? Hopefully you're following me. So while we're looking at our energy field, right, most of us can feel an energy field of about three feet when we're happy, okay? When you're, when you're having anxiety, depression, shame, guilt, rage, all those things, you think your energy field is really big, but it's actually really compressed. It's very compressed. It can, it can pull itself inside of you. So you literally have no space. And if you feel like when you walk around, you're claustrophobic, it's because you have deliberately shoved your field inside of you to protect it. It's like a subconscious protective thing. But most of us who walk around feeling good, we have about this three foot energy field that we work in. It's where our art field is, our emotional field, right? It's, 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 the, it's the tourist of us. It is us, okay? We're not here, we're here, okay? Now, in this field is all of our universe. It is all creation. It is our traumas. It is our, our potentials. It is our losses. It's our failures. It's our triumphs. It's our memories. And through this field, like a screen, right? Like if you've ever seen Iron Man and the screen pops up and he just starts doing this, this is you. You are a biological quantum computer that is not just a physical being. The physicality of you is about 1% of what you actually are, which is 99% empty space. That is all about particles and potentials that are lined up and held in the frequency of either the Akashic records or the quantum matrix. Okay, so we've got all of the memories of all the past timelines that we've ever been, all at our fingertips, guys. It's all here. It's all within us. And we need the heart to be able to read it. Our heart is the only one that can read it, which is why you hire, you hire a practitioner because you're using their heart to reflect yours back to you because they love you, okay? So the heart is the reader, the mind is the judger, okay? So think about that, think about the idea of the virus again. All right, so like I said earlier, when you create a problem for yourself in physical reality, it always starts in the energetic field first, and then you build it and you build it and you build it and then it manifests in physical reality, okay? But it started off as just a choice and just energy that you decided to develop into lack, into judgment, into shame, and then it turned into a problem in a physical reality. You may not remember doing that, but you did it, okay? Hands down, you did it because you're the only one creating your reality, even though it feels like everyone else is. You are creating your reality, okay? So when you create a problem, you also create a solution because you are two sides of a coin, you are duality, you are feminine, masculine, you are light and you are dark. So when you create a problem, you always create the solution as well because it's a game because you're a child. You're a child who came here to play a game and you knew that if you wanted to play, you needed to play both sides. You needed to get the problem and the solution. So you hid the solution from yourself in the quantum field and you buried the problem inside your energy field. You brought the problem close to you, just like you keep your enemies close to you so that you could feel it, so you could be reminded of it, so it would constantly be in your ear, so that you could beckon and command the solution. So we've got this three foot energy field, okay? And we're going to stand up because I really want you to kind of like feel your energy field. It's very important for your ego in this process to feel something because those of you who are not really like touchy feely, you know, clairsentient, where, which means that you don't feel a lot, your, your body needs to experience this on an egoic plane so it will play along with us, right? It's, you don't have to believe in this, it's still working. When you ask, it's given. I don't care who, you, who wants to argue with me on that, it always is. This is just an opportunity for you to get off the table, stand in your power, you know, you want your feet about 
shoulder width apart so you don't fall down because when you start doing the energy work, you're gonna feel the wobble, you're gonna feel the waves, you're gonna feel your field, okay? So you stand and you just kind of like loosen your body up and you start to feel the rhythms of your field around you. You start to get comfortable, you ground, you're like, I'm here, I'm present. I can feel my breath, I can feel my heartbeat. I can hear my voice, I'm here, I'm now, right? And then what I want you to do is take a deep breath and set an intention that I am the creator of my own reality. What I choose to experience is what I see in physical reality, All right? That's it. You're just going to set a command because the true mode of prayer is not asking please. It is commanding as the I am. I am. I am abundant. I am freedom. Okay. I am the problem and I am the solution all within my field. Okay. So what I want you to do is I want everybody, once you've got kind of wiggled in your, your field and you kind of got comfortable and, you know, you're just standing there accepting yourself. I want you to hold out one of your hands and in this hand, I want you to close your eyes because when you close your eyes, it helps you go into your interior universe instead of being stimulated by your five cents, five cent universe, which means you're looking at things. I want you to feel something. So hold out your hand, right? Just comfortably, not rigid, just comfortably. And I'm gonna close your eyes. And I want you to think about a problem, a problem that you personally are experiencing right now, right? Something that doesn't have a solution yet. Something that feels stuck. Something that's worrying your heart. Something that's terrifying you. Something that is shaming you. Something that has humiliated you something that you're resenting, you know, put a big problem. Don't start little. You're the universe. You are you are a creator. Put something big in your hand. Put a big problem in, right? Put the fact that, you know, you're running out of money. Get honest. Don't sugarcoat it. No more of this surviving the moment with, I'm fine, I'm fine. Put the real problem in your hand. If you don't own it you and accept it, you can't. You cannot transcend it. You've got to own the problems that you've created from an unconscious place, and we all do it, and it's all okay. So put a problem in your hand, okay? Now immediately, as you're standing in your field, allowing your body to just be in the flow, you're not locking your knees, you're not locking your shoulders, unlock your jaw, unlock your arms, unlock your belly, unlock your head, just, just be, okay? Put the problem in your hand. Now, the interesting thing about doing this is you can feel it. You can feel that problem. You can feel that it feels heavier than it did before you put the problem in it. It has weight. It has structure. You can't see it, but it's there. And you can feel it in your hand, and it feels like weight. Take a deep breath and just be with that problem for a minute. Just be acceptance of this problem. This is my problem, right? Like your kids come over and go, look what I gave you. And you're like, ah, right? It's like, put your problem in your hand right out in front of you. Wow, that is a problem. But guess what, guys? Now the problem is in your hand and not in your body. Now we have moved it out of our blind spot. We are putting it in our hand and it feels heavy. And we realize that we've been carrying this one and about a thousand other ones inside of our bodies for a really long time and it has distorted our vision. It has distorted what we hear. It distorted how we see the world because it's been inside of us running frequency that projects as real, but it's just a problem. It's just a cluster of thoughts. We gave way too much energy for too long, avoided it, feared it, resented it, rejected it, and then buried it in the body. Now we're pulling it out, boom, feel it. I feel you, you're right there, okay? Everyone's got something different because we're on a unique vision quest right now. My problem is right here, okay? Take a breath. Wow, it's getting heavy. Put the other hand out, okay? Now, because you are the creator of your own reality and you are creating your universe, you are the God and goddess of your world. And what you say goes and what you ask is given. And what you know to be true will be. And you do not have to believe this to feel this, you guys. In the other hand, okay, I want you to summons, beckon, command that the solution 
Do not, do not think about what the solution is. Think about you not knowing what the solution is. I got no clue. My ego might have an idea of how it wants it solved, but I actually don't know how this is going to solve. I don't know when the world will go back online. I don't know that because those timelines keep changing based on how we're showing up every day. When we all show up in surrender and responsibility, game over, we go back online, we create a new world, we live happily ever after in joy of the heart. Simple as this. So put the solution in your other hand, okay? Beckon it. I call a solution. I call the solution. Do not put a story in your hand of what you want that to be. Don't put money in your hand. Don't put a person in your hand. Put the solution as a general concept, right? Almost like, I don't know what's best for me. My higher self does. Higher self, put the solution in my hand and just hold it. Now, notice how light it feels. Notice how different it feels from the problem. Just feel it. Feel your field. Feel the weight of the world of your problems and how light and tingly the solution feels. Wow, ego gets to participate. Ego's like, I feel this. It's kind of weird. It's kind of freaking me out right now. I'm in my field. I'm commanding my universe. I'm about to shift worlds. I'm about to shift a reality that if I allow myself to behave as if after the fact, I will become and live joyously. Do I accept? I do. I do. Now, problem, solution, heavy, light, tingly, sparkly, fun, heavy, dense, icky, right? Now, duality in its perfection, you, your universe, duality, dark, light, good, bad, right? You, creator, two sides of the coin, heads and tails in two hands, density, and lightness, right? Information, ignorance. You're holding your world in your hand. Now, take a breath. This is where you make a choice. Path of least resistance. How do you want to show up to this? Do you want to accept, surrender, allow, and be the person that you truly want to be? Because this is your time. You are the healer. You are creator. You are the quantum computer that says and says, this is who I am. So I've got the problem and I've got the solution. Now, the only way to bring this into the true essence of who I am is to bring both aspects back to the zero point. The zero point is housed in my fourth chakra, in my heart. Okay, so I'm going to take my problem that I don't know what to do with, humble surrender, seventh step of manifestation. I know not what is best for me, but this is my problem and I take ownership, I accept it, I am responsible, my problem. Good, I own it, I accept it, I receive it, I bring it towards me. The solution that I have no idea what it is, how it will manifest, when it will manifest, why it will manifest and in what form, but I'll take it. And I will be so grateful for this. If you put this in my hand, thank you. It happened instantly, didn't it? Because when you ask, it's always given. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to neutralize this in the zero point field by bringing both aspects into my heart and taking a big breath. And when you do this, you bring the problem and solution together. You feel the wave. You kick back. You feel your field moving. You have entered into the zero point. Now it is, it is done. It is yours. You have shifted places. Everything is different, although your eyes have been adjusted. Everything feels the same, but it isn't. Your job now is to act as if. Solution's already in my field. It's percolating from energy into form. May take a day, may take two days, but I'm going to stay in surrender so I don't have to get the car accident. Okay? Now, why I'm giving you guys this gift is because I'd like to speed this process up. Not that we need to. Yes, but, you know, we got a summer to have, people. We got, we got the, you know, sun to be out in. And we got people to see. 
we got things to do. We got a world to build. We got new earth right around the corner saying open for business. I'd like to participate in that with you guys. Not so virtually because, you know, the internet is the internet. I want to touch you. I'm going to hug you, right? So it is done. Now I want to take you through two before we wrap. And here's why. Because this is a vision quest that we are on together. That is both an individual process that will take you into your own quest and a collective quest that we get to all go together for the first time in history. The whole entire planet is on quarantine, right? So we are in this together for the first time globally, not just community, not just country, but planet, okay? So I want you guys to do this twice with me. Once for a selfish individual problem and solution. And then I want us to do it again for a collective problem and a collective solution that we don't have the answer to, right? What is the collective problem? So we'll start with your selfish problem, which is not selfish at all because you're a creator of your reality. You're self-focused. Put your problem in your hand. Feel the weight. Bring it in. Accept it. Breathe it in. But it's there, not here. It's there. I can feel it. I can see it heavy. I'm done with it. It has served me. I have learned from it. I am complete. I am ready for the solution. I command. Please don't ask. Like, please command. You are the commander of the ship. You are the I am. Bring it in. Thank you for whatever it is. Who cares? Bring it in. Take it back. Download it into your zero point field. The heart knows what to do with your mess because you did create the problem and the solution, but the only one who can find it is the one that remains in non-duality because it doesn't have an agenda. Take a breath. Done. Now, let's do a collective. See? You see why my seven-year-old can do this, okay? He does it all the time. All right. Let's do a collective problem, guys. What's a collective problem? I'm not going to choose the collective problem you want. I'm going to choose mine. You choose yours, okay? Think about a collective problem that we participate in that needs to change on this planet. And it doesn't matter what it is. You can even say it out loud if you want. Put it into your hand. It's gonna feel real heavy. It's gonna feel real heavy because you don't remember creating it, right? You are witnessing it, you're feeling it, but you don't necessarily feel like you've created it, but it's yours. You either participated by looking at it or omitting to it or contributing to it. It's real heavy, this collective one. Okay, you might want to really make sure that you're grounding here. Hold that collective problem, right? It could be starvation. It could be economics. It could be, you know, lack of awareness. You fill in what you think the biggest collective problem that we're facing is, and there's no judgment of what that looks like. Right, bring it in, take a breath. I accept that I contributed to creating this collective problem. I accept true definition of love. I accept that this is also my problem because this is also my planet. Take a breath, you start to feel your body in resonance. Okay, I summons the solution that I have no idea what would be the best way to fix this. I may think I know but I don't know. And if I think I know, it's ego. So move out of ego, move into surrender and bring in summons in. Through a commanding statement, I now command a solution. So light, so light. The solutions of the world are so light, kicking back, Woo. feeling the energy fill. Okay, now I'm feeling this, I'm ready. My heart is big enough to heal this whole planet. That's how big my heart filled is because we are the power of one. And when we all sync together, we can unite all on the same mission. We're all on the same team. Remember how children used to play? I'll play the good guy. You play the bad guy, but I still love you. And when we're all done, let's go eat Cheetos. That's what this is about, right? So let's bring it in. Ooh, into your field. Let it go. Awesome, super fun, super scientific, 
Super able to feel that. And now you're all quantum healers playing in the quantum field of possibilities. I urge you to do this as many times a day as you want from different problems because it will immediately change your frequency and vibration to creator. It will change your frequency and vibration to acceptance, surrender. It will also put you in responsibility so that you are not running away from the things that you need to avoid and things that you need to, to hide. This is about ownership. This is about us taking our peace back through love. This is about us being in a space where we can receive love. This is a space where we are not afraid anymore. And we are calm enough as a civilization right now to receive this. Okay? So this is my gift to you guys today. This is quantum healing. This is the this is the zero point method. We use this a lot. Now I'm going to ask you that once you do this, you've shifted worlds. You may not see it. Your ego may be looking around for the solution everywhere, but it's not going to come in the box that your ego wants to come. It's going to come in your path of least resistance. So pay attention. Be present. See what's different. In quantum healing, we don't look for what's better or worse. We look for what's different because sometimes the car accident is the very thing that we need to kick our butt into gear, to bring us the big paycheck, to bring us back to balance, to bring us back to center, to open our hearts. So ask yourself to surrender to how it needs to look, when it needs to show up, and allow yourself to notice what is different every day. Now, that's your first job, to notice what's different. Your second job, behave as if. Behave as if the problem has been solved and you're just waiting on it. Like an order from Amazon Prime, right? I ordered it, now I gotta make space for it. I gotta act like it, I gotta prepare for it. Nothing to prepare for, good, I'll play until it arrives. That is actually how you shift your body chemistry into the new world because you've shifted your energy frequency. And you guys, another reason why we created this virus is because we were so tired. Our souls were tired of fighting this rat race. We're exhausted as a species. We have nothing left to give. And when we had nothing left to give, we'd go heal as many people as we could. And that was not working. So this Easter is all about the resurrection of the human spirit. The human spirit is resurrecting through play, through love, through unconditional love, through receiving without feeling small and undeserving and unworthy. It's about sharing without being humiliated of our own light and our own authenticity. It is about us showing up for ourselves and the world and each other. And the time is now. Your time is now. Your vision quest is powering through. This resurrection energy that we're stepping into for April is about the human spirit coming back to life. So embrace it, milk it, work it, enjoy it. Because once we all get back online, the world's gonna look different. It's gonna feel different. You're gonna be different but you ultimately have free will and you have choice. So you get to participate in living the reality that you choose through a lack of awareness or through an observation of self-realization, you get to choose. Thank you guys for sharing this hour with me. I appreciate this forum. I appreciate all of you tuning in. I appreciate you all participating in quantum healing because it does create a ripple effect. Even though you couldn't see things, you felt it. I know you felt it because I felt you. So enjoy it. Teach this to as many people as you can. They don't have to believe it. Worlds are shifting. Let's say two weeks, guys. Two weeks of practicing, preparing, and playing for what you created today. And let's get the, let's get the new earth online. Thank you guys so much for allowing me to participate today with all of you. Enjoy your weekend.